He madring kila ma tulunga pala mitya daya moda diko Maudyang na kaniva sinang bhaya pararva kya riva prartitaha Nili shambara nila mambara talang jambu palamaya yang Thang mun chan gir mambarang param rishan lambo darapatumam Namaste. The spiritual path given by the Buddha and other great souls as well contains the answers to all the great questions. And indeed, before one can settle the mind and go deep in meditation, one has to resolve any and all questions including the great questions. For example, why does anything exist? Huh? How does the universe come into being? How do we come into being? And of course, the Buddha gives the answer in his teaching on Paticca Samuppada, or dependent origination or dependent arising. So, one day, the Buddha was talking to his cousin Ananda about this, and this question came up. Why does anything exist in the first place? And here's Buddha's answer. I'm going to give the sutta in Pali first, and then the translation. So. Don't try to understand the language, but just listen to the poetry of how the Buddha speaks. Etta vata ko ahananda, jayetava, jiyetava, miyetava, chavetava, upapajetava. Etta vata adi vachanapato. Etavata nirutipato, etavata panyatipato. Etavata panyavachara, etavata vatam vatati, itatam. Panyapanaya yadidma nama rupam saha vinyanena. In so far only, Ananda, can one be born? or grow old, or die, or pass away, or reappear. In so far only is there any pathway for verbal expression. In so far only is there any pathway for terminology. In so far only is there any pathway for designation. In so far only is the range of wisdom. In so far only is the round kept going for there to be a designation as a thisness, that is to say, name and form together with consciousness. So to say this is deep is an understatement. <laughs> this is the this is the bottomless ocean of truth given by the Buddha. So what does this all mean? In so far, in other words, this is the limit. This is how much there can be. Huh? In so far, can one be born or grow old or die or pass away or reappear? In other words, the whole round of birth and death uh, is encompassed by this understanding. So, insofar as there is any pathway for verbal understanding. You see, this is why we stress so much the understanding of terminology. Because without terminology, you do not have understanding. You do not even have consciousness. In fact, 
the very first vibration of name and form comes at the beginning of the universe with the sound Aum. This sound is the universal vibration that sets everything in motion. And so the Buddha is describing a system where name and form leads to consciousness and consciousness feeds back into name and form. This forms a vortex, a circular motion. And this vortex creates the notion of place, of a thing, of thisness. Vatati vatata, as Buddha says. So this thisness, or this existence, or this place, this location, is known as a vortex. And everything that exists is a vortex. Just look at the shape of a spiral galaxy, for example, or a solar system, or even a single cell. They are vortexes. And like a whirlpool, they suck in energy and then uh, beam that energy out in different forms. Now, this is very visible in galaxies and it's very visible actually in the human form too, which is a vortex around a central emptiness. The body, for example, is a vortex around the alimentary canal. It goes from the nose and mouth to the anus. You see, it's a vortex. It's a movement around a hollow center, a whirlpool. And this whirlpool begins with the rotation of name and form and consciousness. Without name and form, there can be no consciousness. Remember what consciousness is. Consciousness is awareness of an object. Now, awareness all by itself doesn't need an object. It's fine just <laughs> being aware of itself. But when the creation begins, the first thing that happens is that there's an object. And the first object is called Shakti. So this is where the universe divides into Shiva and Shakti, Yang and Yin, the dark and the light. She is the light. She is consciousness. She is everything that exists. And she comes into existence through the vibration of Aum. So, of course, the Buddha doesn't talk like that, but the Vedas do. And if you combine the both understandings on the assumption that they're both talking about the same thing, then it adds an additional dimension of understanding. And this is very helpful. But to get this understanding without being confused, one has to know the exact definitions of the terms. So this is why we stress terminology, ontology, epistemology, <laughs> grammar, syntax, and all that stuff that you hated to learn back in school because the people who were teaching it didn't understand its significance. And besides, they were more interested in social conditioning than actual learning. So everybody gets a bad taste for these fundamental subjects in our school system. But don't let that deter you from going back and understanding them properly. Because, oh, let me tell you, the secret to understanding anything at a high level of competence is complete and exact definitions of all the terms. And I mean all the way down to the common words, a, the, if, such, that, for, up. <laughs> it's all these little one syllable words should be completely clearly defined in context 
because they are the glue that connect all the other words together. So this has been our study, and it's in the uh, details that are given in the Matrix Learning or Becoming Genius course. So back to Buddha. <laughs> in so far is the round kept going, huh? the round of birth and death, being born, growing old, dying, passing away, reappearing over and over and over and over. Why? Why is it such a cycle? Why does the universe come into being and exist for some time and then disappear again, only to be recreated at a later date? It's only because of this round of name and form and consciousness. This is the vortex, the fundamental movement that creates a thisness. A thisness is opposed to a thatness. <laughs> thisness means something that's within my vortex, and a thatness is something that's outside my vortex. So, we think we exist because of this constant round, this rotation between consciousness and name and form. This is the engine that powers samsara. So if we can go deeply into it and understand it fully, we can deconstruct it. And this leads to realization of Nibbana. Don't be intimidated by how deep this is. Huh? A whirlpool is deep too. But if you get to the bottom of it, it just peters out and becomes like a, a little spiral. Huh? So this is the key, this is the secret. In so far only is the round kept going for there to be a designation as a thisness. And that's what a name is. A designation of a form, isn't it? So name and form, and then consciousness of that name and form is the primordial vortex the engine of Paticca Samuppada. And this is what keeps the whole universe going. This is what makes things exist in the first place. And then their interactions are what keeps the game going. And it's all based on this illusion, this mirage of motion, this exchange of energy and this feedback loop between consciousness and name and form. So one must look very deeply into this phenomenon of name, meaning words and their definitions. And to become completely clear on that is to understand the origins of consciousness. Because as we have seen so many times, if we are not aware of the terminology of a phenomenon, we cannot observe it. We cannot discriminate it from other phenomena. And the example I like to give is Turiya and the other states of consciousness, waking, dreaming, and deep sleep. The scientists don't make any distinction, and most philosophers also don't distinguish between ordinary consciousness and Turiya, even though Turiya is fundamentally different because it is a state of consciousness whose objects are the other states of consciousness. And those states of consciousness, their objects are the senses, the mind, and phenomena in the world. So, I asked this question a long time ago. How can the being, which is completely spiritual, be aware of this material world? And this is the answer. So, after all these years, it finally became clear, and I understood everything. And this led very quickly to attaining complete enlightenment. Aung Tatsat. 
Aung Shakti Aung.